Now I get to my favorite part of the entire night. I hold that for last. What to me personally makes the Fatiha miraculous? What makes the Fatiha so beautiful that it can't even, I can't logically say, even if I don't even think like a Muslim, if I think like a non-Muslim, if I reflect on what I'm sharing with you, it's hard for me to come up with how a human being can talk like this. How, how can a human being speak like this? Here's what I'm going to share with you. Pay attention to this part, okay? This is, this is probably the most important part. There are two themes in the Fatiha. Knowledge and action. There are two themes in the Fatiha. Knowledge and action. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawm deen All of that is knowledge. Knowledge about who? Knowledge about Allah. Yes? You with me? Three ayat are about knowledge. Is that clear to everyone? When we say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُوا وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَلْضَالِّينَ All of this is verbs. All of this is about what? Not knowledge, but action. The surah began with knowledge. The surah concludes with action. You with me so far? Okay. Now there are three situations. Some people have knowledge, and that knowledge leads them to action. If your knowledge leads you to action, then you must be on the straight path. Make sense? So to be on the straight path, what do you need? You need knowledge and you need action. Okay. But there are two other situations. There are some people who have knowledge, but it doesn't translate into action. And there are other people who have action, but it's not based on correct Knowledge. Now, if you have knowledge, but you don't act, which category in the Fatiha? Which category? Al-Maghdubi alayhim. They have knowledge, but they don't have the corresponding action. If you have action, well intended, but you're, it's based on incorrect information, then you have action without knowledge. Which category is that? al The surah begins knowledge, then talks about action and knowledge together. Then it talks about knowledge without action. Then it talks about action without knowledge. It's perfectly symmetrical. It balances both of those themes perfectly. Let's go back again. The surah begins... Uh, how do you talk like that by the way? Who, who talks like this? SubhanAllah. And the Qur'an just is spoken. It's, it's just spoken. It's, it, and it wasn't like it was repeated, like let me say it another way now, because that might sound better. <laughs> There's no editorial process. Now look at it from a linguistics perspective. And I know you're not students of linguistics. Maybe probably most of you are not. So I have to make this simple for you to understand. But this is one of the most incredible things about the Fatiha. One of the most incredible things. The Fatiha, or in the Arabic language, has two kinds of sentences. They have verb-based sentences, and they have noun-based sentences. Now today I talk to you about verbs and nouns. Which one is permanent? Nouns. Which one is temporary? Verbs, yes? So the Arabs have two kinds of sentences. Verb-based and noun-based. Jumla ismiya, jumla fi'liya. That's what they call it. Okay? Now when the verb-based sentences are used, the context is typically temporary. When the noun-based sentence is used, the context is typically, or the ideas are typically what? Permanent. It's just a rhetorical thing. Okay? The fa- now, I want you to keep that in the back of your mind. Noun-based sentences are de- describe permanence. Verb-based sentences describe temporary. That's the linguistic function of them. Okay. Now, Fatiha can be divided into three parts. First, I said there are two themes. What are the two themes? Knowledge and action. Now, we're going to divide it into three parts. The first part is about Allah. You tell me which part is about Allah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Din That's part one Part two is an agreement between us and Allah Part about Allah, part about us Which part is that? Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'in Okay, and the third part is about ourselves We want something for ourselves What part is that? Ihdina as-sirat al-mustaqeem Sirat al-adhina na'amta alayhim Ghayr al-maghdubi alayhim Walad-dhalim Three parts 
Part one is about Allah. Part one is an agreement between us and Allah. Part three is our request to Allah, it's about us. What's incredible from a linguistics perspective is that part one is linguistically, it's noun sentences. It's a noun sentence. Now what do you know about noun sentences? It's talking about Allah, so it's only appropriate that noun sentences be used. Because noun sentences are permanent and Allah is permanent. What was part three about? Part three is about who? Not part two, part three. Us. That's a verb-based sentence too. And verb-based sentences linguistically are what? Temporary, just like we ourselves are temporary. What's left? What did I skip? I talked about part one, I talked about part three, what did I not talk about? Part two. Now part two is incredible because they say the noun sentence begins with a noun. And the verb sentence begins with a verb. That makes common sense, doesn't it? But sometimes they do this crazy thing where they have a verb sentence even though it began with a noun. Now when a verb sentence begins with a noun, it's considered a mixture. In Arabic grammar, you call it maf'ul bihi muqaddam. But who cares? Who cares? The middle sentence is actually a verb sentence with a noun beginning. It's a mixture of both sentences. And the middle sentence is also a mixture because part of it is for Allah and part of it is for ourselves. The linguistics of the first part of the Fatiha is noun based because it's about Allah. The middle is a mixture because it's mixing between us and Allah. And the last part is verb based because it's about ourselves. Even linguistically it's perfect. It's perfect. You couldn't move anything. Now I've talked to you about it linguistically and I've talked to you about it thematically. It's the balance of the Fatiha. But there's other balances. Let's go back. Fatiha, if you want to learn about its perfection, its perfection comes from balance. It balances things. It balanced the theme of knowledge with action. It balanced nouns with verbs. Now we're going to learn something else. It actually is a perfect symmetry because the, what's the middle of the... When something is balanced, it means it hangs from the middle. So if you put something in the middle, there should be half on this side, half on that side. So which ayah is in the middle? Which ayah is in the middle? Trick question. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in is in the middle. Okay. Now iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in itself, that ayah itself has how many parts? Two parts. What's part one? Iyaka na'budu. What's part two? Iyaka nasta'in. Now check this out. Iyaka na'budu is the conclusion of part one. Iyaka na'budu is the conclusion of part one. What do I mean? If you know Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin, what conclusion do you reach? Iyaka na'budu. That's your conclusion. I want to be Allah's slave. Now I know Allah and I want to be his slave. Now, what's the second part of that ayah? Iyaka nasta'in. What's the ultimate help you can get from Allah? What is the ultimate help you get from Allah? His guidance. Iyaka nasta'in is the introduction to part two. Iyaka na'budu is the conclusion of part one. Iyaka nasta'in is the introduction of part two. The surah is perfectly balanced from the middle ayah. Perfectly balanced. It's incredible. It's mind-boggling. Let's go back again. The Fatiha balances other themes. Hope in Allah, hope in Allah comes from Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. But if hope is blind, you become irresponsible. So responsibility comes with what ayah? Maliki Yawmiddin. Allah balanced hope with responsibility between Ar-Rahman, between Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim and Maliki Yawmiddin. Okay. There are two other things that are balanced. If you just have praise, it's artificial. If you just have thanks, you don't include praise. How do you balance praise and thanks? What do you say? Alhamdulillah. It balances between knowledge and action. By the end, I told you, knowledge and action together, as sirat al-mustaqim. Just knowledge, no action, al-maghbub alayhim. Just action, no knowledge, al-dalim. Everything about this surah is balanced. Look at the beginning. 
The beginning says, Rabbil Alameen, all peoples of the world, all nations of the world. And at the end of the surah, Allah says, there are only going to be three kinds of people in all of the Alameen. The Alameen will either be the Alameen of people on as Sirat al Mustaqim, Al Ladina and Amta Alayhim, or it will be the people of Al Maghdub Alayhim, or it will be the people of Al Dalin. All of humanity falls under one of these three categories. Every human being on this earth, is from Al Alameen, which means every human being on this earth is either Min Al Ladina and Am Ta'alim, it's from those who Allah favored, or those who get Allah's anger, or those who are still confused and lost and don't know any better yet. Those are the only three categories. That's it. Al Alameen is described by the end.